Hi guys, it's me. So I am making, it's Tresa, I am making pumpkin pie. And this is evaporated milk. So I'll let you guys see that. Ooh, that's better. Evaporated milk. And pure pumpkin puree. Now I do do it old fashioned. I do do it um, by myself, which is by hand. But today, I am not doing that. I am not that girl today. I am not doing that at all. So, I'm going to show you what's in here and what I put in here. And that way, you guys can see what I'm doing. So, I need to grab a spoon and some eggs. I do not have large eggs. So, because I don't have large eggs, I am substituting it for three small eggs or medium sized eggs. That will make the total amount that I need. So, I am scooping out the pumpkin right now. Ooh, you fell. My mistake. Give me one second to rectify the problem. Sorry about that. There you go. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm just taking out the pumpkin. I mean, on the can there is a recipe that you can use for your family. Um, so, I did show on my um, pecan pie recipe, I showed how to make extra pie dough. And this is what the extra pie dough was for, was for this recipe. So I'm also going to add my eggs now. Because it mixes up pretty fast. Because um, it's relatively easy recipe. I know it says two large eggs, but like I said, I only have medium eggs. So I'm adding three eggs. And then I'm adding my sugar. Okay, then I'm going to add my seasonings here. So you will need cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, and clove. I don't know who else, but they add ginger to theirs. I'm not a big ginger fan in my pumpkin pie. And that's a pinch of salt. And then we're going to do, I'm going to use my spoon I used, which is a tablespoon. I'm gonna use a tablespoon full of cinnamon. Because I like it like that. I like cinnamon. Cinnamon is good for you. Doesn't cause too many problems. So cinnamon. Cinnamon, clove. It doesn't say nutmeg on here. And then a pie crust. I have pre-made my pie crust. So, and I'm going to pick a spot that doesn't have a lot of powder, but all of it does. A dash, which is literally a sprinkle of clove. And then I have whole nutmeg. Now, as anybody knows, whole nutmeg can be really strong. Um, I do about... I want to say 
Hmm. A little bit more. I like a teaspoon of it, maybe. I do about that much. So basically, if you have a whole a whole one, you're gonna do about I wanna say if you have a whole one, you wanna do about the tip of it. So that way you can get almost all of it in there. So in a second here, I'm gonna be mixing them all together and it's gonna get loud. So I am going to show you what it looks like when it's all mixed. Okay, so to me, it doesn't have enough cinnamon. So I'm adding some more. I am also adding a little bit more clove. So adding a little bit more of that. This is clove, ground up clove. And of course, ground up cinnamon. Okay. And like I said, I'm doing whole nutmeg. You can, you can adjust it how you want it. So it doesn't have to be that much clove. It doesn't have to be that much nutmeg. Um, I like fresh nutmeg. It, it gives the pie a little bit of flavor that I happen to like. So I think I'm going to stop there, which is a little bit more than, whoops, here. Which is a little bit more than half. So it's the other half. Um, one that hasn't been touched. Looks like that. That's a whole nutmeg. And then this is the half that I did. So it's a half. It depends on your taste too. Um, do not do this while you have a stuffy nose. You may overdo it. So I'm going to get really noisy here right now because I'm putting in my blender beaters. So this is what it looks like. Yes, it's a little frothy, but it will go down once it cooks. It will cook at 350 degrees. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and make sure you flatten out your pie dough with a rolling pin and some extra flour. Now, I'm going to clean up, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I put two 8 ounces of cream cheese in here. Um, I made orange sugar uh, because it's just orange zest and regular granulated sugar. Um, about a tablespoon and a half in here. Then three big dollops of sour cream. And I will give that a mix. And then I am going to put in my eggs. Now I'm going to be rolling out the pie dough. Now, pie dough doesn't have to be complicated. I did not make mine complicated. Um, mine was actually really simple. So, it's basically butter, salt, um, flour, uh, some water, and a little bit of sugar. So, like I said, it's not that complicated. It comes out great every single time you roll it. Um, mine's been in the fridge versus the freezer. So, I mean, you can make it as thin as you want. I happen to like trying to make this as thin as I can. Because, like I said, people are going to eat it. So, I'm trying to make it as thin as possible. So, if I'm making a mess, it's okay. My kitchen, my rolls, right? If it was your kitchen, you could make whatever you wanted, right? But, my kitchen, my rolls, so. I'm making a mess. Yes, I know. And I'm moving the camera. I'm sorry. Because this thing's moving too, so it doesn't have to be the best pie dough ever. No, it doesn't. When you're rolling it, get it up against the rolling pin and roll it with the rolling pin. Careful, you can puncture a hole in this and then you don't have a bottom of a pipe. 
thing. So this is my pie mold. So I am going to roll it directly into the pie mold. So I may have to fix it because, of course, I literally just literally decided to plop it in there. And you fix it to the size of your, your mold here. So mine has a little bit that's off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to slightly move it over just so that I don't have that hole. And you don't want air pockets yet. I'm going to show you what I mean by yet. Right now you don't want any air pockets because you want it to stick to the pan or your pie, your pie dough basically. You want this thing to stick to the bottom. Now you could nicely do this. I don't have, I didn't bring another knife. So all I have is the sour grow cream um, spoon because I'm going to break it off. People say you can, um, what is it, crimp it. I'm, I'm not a big crimper. I've never been one. So I just usually tear it off. But if I feel like crimping it, I'll crimp it. But I do leave a little excess off just in case there is a slight tear somewhere. I have at least some of it already already piled off to the side just in case something like that happens. Now, if you think your sides are too thick, take your thumb and press upwards. Like literally take your thumb and press upwards into the pie so that way all sides feel the same. You can do this if you want. You don't. Don't worry about it. Not that big of a deal. Now, I am taking some of my pumpkin and I'm pouring it off to the, I'm pouring some off to the side because I want um, some pumpkin cheesecake and then this is all the pumpkin that we've just made so like literally get it all in there and I have some still in the bowl so I'm gonna go get my scraper And I am going to scrape out what I can out of the bowl I used for the pumpkin. Now, you don't have to use as big of a bowl as I did. It just makes it easier, especially when you're using a handheld. Because you don't have time to freaking do everything else. So, Plus, you don't want all those ingredients, especially the expensive ones. You know, to go to waste. Some people put vanilla in their pumpkin pie. Uh, personally, I do not. I don't see the reason for it. So, I don't do it. I did not pre-bake this pie. No. Um, because it's going to go right in the oven, like right now. Um, that side's a little softer than it should be. Um... Like I said, I'm going to put it in, and I don't want any on this handle because that's where I'm going to be grabbing. So I'm going to kind of semi-crimp it so that I can put it in the oven. Any excess um, dough that's hanging over the edge will burn, so don't put too much. Remember, I made this really thin for the simple fact is, is that not everybody I know... Um, I'm not very good at making scallop edges. I've already said that, so I'm just trying to make sure that this doesn't puff up and land everywhere in my, um, my oven all over the place. So, if you want to add any extras in yours, by all means, go ahead. I do not. I'm not going to add any extras. I think it tastes fine just the way it is. Um, I 
see, like I said, I'm not very good at crimping. I I try, but I know my grandmother's way way better at this than I am. So I'm gonna stick this in the 350 degree oven for 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, be really careful because I don't want it to fall. Okay, Google, start a timer for 30 minutes. Now, I can put this back in my container that has my pie dough in it, and I can freeze it up to three to, up to six months, actually, because it's in the freezer. You'll be fine. Um, if you make any more pies, uh, you can still use this. Just stick it in the fridge, and you can keep on using it. All right, now I'm going to add, for the cream cheese one, I am going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. And remember, I don't have large eggs. It asks for a four, four large eggs, and I'm not doing four large eggs. I am actually doing six, which I know is a lot, but it also causes for egg yolks. So... Not egg whites. So I did three eggs, four, and then it asked for two egg yolks. So I'm going to do the egg yolks off camera. Ouch. There's one. Oh, it's split funny. Just as long as I can get the egg yolk, I should be fine. And an egg yolk. Okay. That's all that I was missing. Um, it says to add some more sugar, so give me one second. I'm going to add some more sugar here. Do remember it's just me, so that's a cup of sugar. So I'm gonna make some noise with my mixer here, and I'm gonna add some of the cheesecake just a little bit to the pumpkin that I have off camera. Now you don't have to add. The cheesecake to pumpkin you don't have to do that I'm doing it because I wanted to experiment and I wanted to so I'm adding that to that and I'm putting my cream cheese mixture out of the way and this is what the pumpkin and cheesecake looks like now this is what the pumpkin and cheesecake looks like if it's not thick enough it will thick enough in the oven and now I'm going to make the pie crust for these these are gonna be the cheesecake muffin well not muffin cheesecake minis is what they're gonna be so the pink ones are going to be going to be my pumpkin so I need to get out a different color for just the cheesecake so actually i think i'm going to make the cheesecake pink 
because who cares? Um, and I'll make the pumpkin yellow, considering it is a squash. Some squashes are yellow, because I don't have any other color besides yellow, pink, and two whites. So I'm on deal with what I got. So that's what I got. That's what I'm dealing with. Um, you can make this into a bigger batch if you want to. You just double the recipe. Um, like I said, I have a small one. So, I'm dealing with that at this moment. I melted one fourth a stick of butter, which is four tablespoons of butter, and with the graham crackers, so I can get this started. Cause right now it's very hot still, and I don't want to hurt myself, so I got a spatula. So yeah, like I said, right now it's still really hot. I'm still smushing it with my hands very carefully. It's cooling off, which is fine. I'm just trying to get it all mixed in so that it can go into our molds here. So, that's almost done. And graham crackers are absorbing all the butter. Alright. Yep, okay. So, I'm going to pour... Small little handful at the bottom of each one. Because remember, you're going to press these down. Do I remember that? That you're going to press these down with something. Um, I'm going to probably press them down with my spatula. So these are not pressed down yet at all. Remember, you're making two different kinds. So keep that in mind. It's better to have more um, bottom than it is filling sometimes, so just not in your cheesecake. <laughs> you like to have a good ratio, so I'm trying to get it as good as I can, I guess you could say. If it fills up more, then it fills up more. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. So this is supposed to make um, this is supposed to make a few. So I am going to use, I'm going to go get two different spoons so I can put them in there. So I apologize for all the back and forth. But I didn't realize today was going to be, I have to have a spoon day. So um, one's going to be for the pumpkin cheesecake and the other one is going to be for the cheesecake but right now it's going to be so I can smash the crust down at the bottom as evenly as you can like I said it doesn't have to be perfect remember you're a home cook you you do what you want in your kitchen um, I know you can buy the crust already pre-made and all this other stuff, but I'm sorry. When it's for my family or my friends, I kind of like to freaking make it by scratch. So that means I am actually sitting here pounding in the, um, graham crackers. I'm actually making the graham cracker crust from scratch as much as possible. I am... I'm doing as much as I can to make this a feast for my family. So, a little bit more in graham crackers in some of the places. But, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's your kitchen. You make it how you want. Now, I haven't made cheesecake miniatures in a long time. 
So my ratio may be a little off, which is fine with me. That just means I get to make a whole one if, you know, this doesn't work out perfectly. Which is fine. That just means I wasted a little bit of product. But if you're a family who can't afford to waste product, be careful with how much you put in. Okay? Now, I am putting the cheesecake filling in right now. I'm using a tablespoon because... I don't want to put a whole bunch in here and then have it overflow. So about three tablespoons looks like the right amount. If you want to put a little bit more, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it just because this is cheesecake and you don't want to put too much. Remember the sour cream is not on top. It's actually in the mixture itself. So, remember that, okay? I added a little cheapy to this one, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And then you're just going to continue until all of them are full with your cheesecake mixture and your pumpkin cheesecake mixture. Now I'm going to put this one in the oven for 20 minutes. Okay, I still have cheesecake left over. So... I'm going to put these Christmas ones in extra tins because that's all I got at this moment. And then I guess the white ones in there and see how much is left after that and go from there. And so the pumpkin ones are already in the oven cooking. Like literally right this very second are cooking. So I'm going to put... A little less graham crackers than I did the first one because when I put them in I felt them and I was like oh that's a little too much graham cracker just enough to cover the bottom should be fine um, remember this is supposed to be like a New York cheesecake almost so if you need more tins or you have to do it again um, I'm only doing the cheesecake, so. Oh, that's stuck. Oh, poop. That's okay. Not a great big deal, but. I guess I'm just going to put it together with my hands because apparently that stuck and didn't do what I needed it to do, which was stick to the bottom. Didn't stick to the bottom very well, did it? My hands are sticky and it's not working. All right, got another spoon. Okay, apparently that piece doesn't want to stick. It's fine, it doesn't have to. I like it pretty much all flat would be nice, but you know, to each its own, whichever works, you know? I'm going to use the spoon again to put cheesecake mixture in these in here. I'm going to do it for the exact same time, which is 20 minutes, because they are muffin. There are muffin tins. So, I wasn't expecting how much leftover I would have for the cheesecake for this particular recipe because like I said I haven't done it in a long time so because I haven't done it in a long time I wasn't expecting how much it was going to make so what I put into the oven already was um, let me see 12 
So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I'll have 18 of these. Well, not in a row, obviously, but I will have them ready for our guests as well as friends if they decide to pop on by. They're more than welcome to have a piece of cheesecake mini. So, looks like about four scoops makes it about even. Besides me dribbling it all over the place. Which I'm not trying to, but stuff happens. Okay, Google, stop. That would be for my pumpkin pie. Because that's the one I did first. This one down here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit of a wonky one, so I am putting some of the batter in that one to make it a little bit better. Hmm. She kind of went south on me there. I mean, I could have filled up the other ones the same way, but honestly, I didn't want to. Didn't want to make them too full, so it looks like there's enough for like two more. So, I'm going to try to, I got another, I got another one I could fill up with the cheesecake mixture and I'll go from there.